In this video, Timmy's going to show you how to download your entire Google Photos library to your computer, or perhaps a flash drive or external hard drive or something. Before you do this, you might actually want to check how much storage space all your photos will take up. You can do that by going to one.google.com slash storage. Go to this website here. And then when you scroll down here, you should see Google Photos somewhere here, and it will tell you how much storage your Google Photos are taking up. So on this account here, Timmy has 2.24 gigabytes worth of photos. This is a demo account, so this is probably a bit smaller than you'll like be likely to have. For example, this is Timmy's personal account, just to give you an idea of how, how big, how much storage space your photos could be taking up. So there is a chance if you really have a lot of photos and videos, there might not even be enough storage space on your computer to download them all at the same time. And if that's the case, the best option will be to consider downloading your photos to directly to a flash drive or external hard drive or something like this. Don't worry, it's actually pretty easy to do. You just have to plug the flash drive or hard drive or whatever it is into your computer and then change the download location in your browser so that the files download directly to that drive. And Timmy has other videos about how you can do that in all the popular browsers. So you can go and watch one of those videos for your browser if you need to. But once you've done that, if you think you needed to do that, to get started actually downloading your photos, you'll need to go to takeout.google.com here. And if you have used Google Takeout recently, you might see this, but most people probably won't see this little bit here. You'll just see this. And Google Takeout is a tool that basically allows you to download all of your data that's on your Google account, so absolutely everything. If you're watching this video, you probably just want your Google Photos data, not all your data. So you'll actually want to click deselect all here to unselect all of your Google data. And then we'll need to scroll down through this list here and find Google Photos to just select that data. So we'll scroll down till we see it. We should see the logo and it'll say Google Photos. There's a lot of different Google things, so you have to scroll a fair way. Here we go, we have Google Photos here. And now once we've found it, we need to click this tick box here to tick this box to select all the Google Photos data. And you can also click all photo albums included here if you want to. And then you can basically see all the different albums that you have of Google Photos. And you can choose to unselect some. So maybe if you didn't want your archived photos or a cool pictures album or something, you could untick that and then not download those few specific albums or maybe not trash and stuff like that. But for this example, to me, it's just going to leave everything ticked and we'll go out of there. But then once you're happy with this, you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page here and click next step here. And now, you'll get to choose how you want to download all your photos. So you will want to leave most of this really as it is. You'll see transfer to send download link via email. That's what you want. And you want to export once, not every two months. You want it as a zip file. But one thing you might want to change is the file size here. To me, I would probably recommend you click on it here where it says two gigabytes and change that to 50 gigabytes, which is as high as it can go. When you download all your photos, it's going to put all of them into a zip file to download them, but that zip file can't be any bigger than what you set it to here. So that in this case, the zip file couldn't be any bigger than 50 gigabytes. So if you have 60 gigabytes worth of photos, they'll actually have to be split into two separate zip files. So you'll get one zip file that's about 50 gigabytes and another zip file that's about 10 gigabytes. But if you had this set to two gigabytes and you have 60 gigabytes of photos, you would actually have to download 30 different two gigabyte zip files, which would be pretty annoying. But if you had say 
39 gigabytes of photos and you set it to 50 gigabytes, you would then just have one 39 gigabyte zip file. So you're really just setting the maximum size that you're allowing a zip file to be. The less zip files you have to download is really going to be easier and neater because you end up having to merge them once they're downloaded back to your computer. So it's probably best to set it to 50 gigabytes to basically reduce the number of zip files you'll need. But if your computer or internet is a bit slow, it might struggle trying to download a 50 gigabyte file. So if you have issues with it, you might need to try setting it to a slightly smaller zip file size, which might make it a bit easier to download. But in this case, to me, it's just going to set it to 50 gigabytes. And then once you've set whatever size you want here, go ahead and click Create Export. And now it will begin creating a zip file of all your photos and videos that you have on Google Photos. And if you have quite a lot of photos, this could take quite a long time, possibly even like a day or something. But you don't need to stare at this screen the whole time and wait for it. In fact, you can actually close this tab entirely if you want to and probably close that tab as well. You don't need to be sitting here waiting. You can just go and do whatever else you want to do and you'll get an email from Google when your zip files are ready to be downloaded. Because this is a demo account and to me doesn't have all that many photos, the email came in really in about three minutes. So that's right here, but you could certainly be waiting a fair bit longer. But once your email arrives and you open it, you'll have these blue buttons to download your files and there'll always be at least two. In this case, all of Tommy's photos actually fit into one zip file. So we have one for all the photos and videos. And then we have a second file that just has a kind of a file that explains that all the photos are downloaded. You don't really need that extra file, but you can download it anyway and look at it if you want to. But if all your photos had to be split into multiple separate files, you might have three or four separate buttons here and maybe the first three would be photos and videos and then there'd be a fourth which would be just that file that explains everything but you really just need to click on the first button here to open up google takeout again and for security reasons you will need to enter your google account password even though you are already signed in you just have to enter it again to prove it's definitely you And now it will bring you to this page here and it should actually start downloading the first file immediately. So as we can see up here, it's downloading the first file. This file is 4.9 gigabytes. So Tommy knows that was actually all of Tommy's photos. So Tommy probably won't even bother downloading the second zip file. But if you had a very large amount of photos and videos and they have to be split across multiple files, you would need to click on all of these download buttons. There'd be a whole list of download buttons here and you need to click on each one of them to download each of those zip files. It might be a good idea to download them one at a time. So you would wait for this to finish before you download the next one. But if you have good internet and your computer's pretty good, you could probably try and download them all at once if you want to. But we'll just wait for this to finish. There's a minute left. This will look a bit different depending on your browser. This is what it looks like in Chrome, unless you're on a Chromebook, in which case it again looks a bit different, but then in other browsers, it also looks a bit different. But you'll see the download progress somewhere and you'll just need to wait for that to finish downloading. And now this zip file has finished downloading. So maybe from com completeness, we will also click on the download button for part two and download that. Although as Tommy said, it's only 73 kilobytes, so there's not even a single photo in there. All of the actual data we want is in part one in this case, but we'll download both of them just to be sure. But now, if you go to your computer's files app and go into your downloads folder, or if you have your files downloading directly to a flash drive or external hard drive or something, you'll need to go into that folder basically to open up that drive you now have one or multiple zip files that say take out and then really just a bunch of numbers. But 
Once they're downloaded like this, all that's really left to do is open the zip files and extract all the photos out of them, and then possibly merge all of the files back together if you have quite a lot of zip files. Unfortunately, this is where it gets a bit complicated and it can be quite different depending on your computer and how many zip files you have. But if you just have one zip file, we might just ignore this one. If you just have one zip file like this and you can tell that one's not gonna have any photos in it because it's really small, all your photos are gonna be in there. All you really need to do is just extract this one zip file and get the photos out. So if you already know how to open and extract zip files on your computer, you can just go ahead and do that. But if you're not familiar with zip files, Tommy has separate tutorials on how to open zip files on Chrome OS, Mac, and Windows. So whichever computer you use, you'll find links in the description below to tutorials for how you can open those zip files on your computer. But if all your photos actually had to be split across several different zip files and you have, have several large zip files here, you'll need to merge these zip files together, which can be a little tricky and the process is very different depending on your computer. So Tommy has another three separate videos for Chrome OS, Mac, and Windows, where Tommy shows you how you can correctly merge these Google Takeout zip files together on each of those operating systems. And you'll find links to those videos in the description below if you need them. But if you have three zip files where there's two that are a reasonable size and then one tiny one, you will need to go and watch that video one of those videos and see how you can merge those zip files together. But once you've done whatever you needed to do on your computer to get those zip files extracted, Timmy's just extracting this main zip file here and now we can delete this zip file and Timmy will just show you what's inside the tiny zip file as well. The tiny zip file just has an archive browser.html so it's basically this mini website that tells you you exported 3,517 files or however many you exported. And you can read through a whole lot of other information like that. It can be kind of interesting, but you don't really need it at all. And it doesn't actually contain any of your photos or anything. So you can really just delete and well, ignore that, that final or that small zip file, it's really all the other zip files that are going to have all your photos and everything in it. But then once you've extracted your zip files and merged them together if you needed to, you should now just have one folder named takeout here. And if you go inside that folder, you'll have one folder named Google Photos. And inside that folder, you'll have a bunch of other folders, which are all your Google Photos albums really. So the majority of your photos are probably going to be in folders like photos from 2025, photos from 2024, and so on. Just all your main photos in your Google Photos library are going to be in folders like this, depending on what year they were taken. But you'll also have folders like archive, which is any photos you've archived, and specific albums. So if you've created albums in Google Photos, any photos that were in the album named Cool Pictures will now be in this folder named Cool Pictures. So that's pretty much all there is to it there. You can click around and find all your photos and maybe start to rearrange them a little bit in here if you want to and really do whatever you want with them. But you will also have a lot of .json files and you kind of don't really need these. The idea is they hold extra data. So for example, in this Google Photos folder here where we see all the other individual folders, we have print subscriptions.json. So if you had any print subscriptions on Google Photos, this file is basically a list of them and we have shared album comments and stuff like that. So maybe you want the data, you can open it up in certain apps and read it, but it's kind of messy and hard to read and you really probably don't want these, so you can probably just delete them. They're not actually photos or anything. You're not deleting any of your actual content, so you can probably skip that. 
And then you'll also have a lot of .json files. Maybe we'll go into photos from 2025. There will typically be a .json file for every single photo you have. So we have this 2025 blah, blah, blah JPEG. And we have exactly that name again, dot supplemental metadata dot json. So we have a separate dot json file for every photo we have. And the point of a dot json file is to store extra data that would usually be attached to the photo in Google Photos. So things like the date and time, the location it was taken, and also things you might have added like the description and stuff will all be held in that .json file. But there is also some data like the date and time already attached to the photo anyway. And the .json files can be kind of hard to read and messy. For example, this is one of them for one of the photos. So you probably don't really want to look at this anyway. There are advanced ways you can try and merge these together. So you can run it through a special tool where it will put all that data back onto the photo as much as it can. So maybe you want to keep them and use them for that. But really, most people are probably just going to want to ignore the .json files or possibly even delete them completely and just have your photos. It can kind of confuse people. They might see a whole lot of .json files and think some of their photos are didn't download correctly or not working or not openable or something but you will actually have all of your photos here correctly in some way. We have this one here that we just opened here. So all of your photos will actually be in here. They will just have an accompanying, accompanying .json file that you probably don't need. You can sort it by kind so that you put all the .json files together and then you can quite easily actually select all of the ones in this folder and delete them and then you'll just be left with your actual JPEGs, PNGs, videos, and so on. So you can quite safely delete them and just keep your actual content that you want, but you could also keep the .json files and potentially read data from them or try and merge them with the actual photos if you really want to, but to me probably wouldn't bother with that. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Now you can Go through all your photos, maybe tidy them up a bit if you want to, maybe just keep them on your flash drive or hard drive or something, store them anywhere you want, do whatever you want with them. They're now on your computer. And hopefully you found this video helpful and we might see you in another one in the future.